Hello everyone and welcome to the September webcast with the Agile Central community. My name is Stephen Black and I work in product marketing for Agile Central. With me here today is Cassie Kern, a senior Scrum Master, as well as Todd Galloway, who is also a senior Scrum Master. They will be presenting on how you can put the shine back into lackluster retrospectives. By implementing the best practices and adding a little fun to this crucial Agile ceremony, your teams can develop a basis for increased productivity, teamwork, and even long-term success. For those of you who are new to this webcast series, these webcasts typically consist of a presentation and a general conversation given by someone from our customer success, product management, pre-sales, or education team on how to use or better use various features and functionalities within Agile Central. And these presentations are designed for Agile Central users just like you. We encourage questions and answers, so please feel free to submit your questions in the panel in the WebEx screen on the right. We will go over these after the presentation. And just a friendly reminder that this webcast will be recorded and that the, real, the replay will be available on the Agile Central community for you to watch at a later time or even share with a colleague. Well, I'll now hand it over to Cassie and Todd. Well, thank you so much. We're excited to be here to talk about retros. I know Todd and I are both super passionate about them. Love retros. For sure. Favorite thing. <laughs> so uh, let's just get started by um, level setting on why retros are important. Well, you know, why are we all here? So right in the Agile Manifesto, the, the 12th principle on there is that at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. So that's exactly what retros are for. It's a time for the team to inspect and adapt on their iteration, their teamwork, their methods, just dedicated time to talk about any issues that come up as a team, and you're just creating ever-improving working agreement. So that's why we think they're super important. So most retros will follow um, a standard format. Um, so first you're going to set the stage, um, you know, talk a little bit about what happened this sprint. Next you're going to gather data where people are brainstorming about whatever categories you're looking at. Uh, usually there's some sort of voting involved and you're going to talk about certain issues and generate insights. Um, and last you're going to decide what to do and then close the retro. So, most of the examples we're going to talk about will, in general, follow this basic format. We may not go into every single step for these, but um, just to kind of give you an example of some context around these retros. So yeah, so what are some common pain points that, that folks uh, experience either running or participating in retrospectives? From a facilitator point of view, sometimes it kind of gets dull if you do the always what went well. Uh, what's not going so well, and what do we need to change format for retrospective, it's generally the standard. Um, sometimes you start to get a lack of engagement from the team. They're just like, oh goody, retro, yay, I got to show up here and put stickies on the board, etc. And it's just, they kind of get bored with the whole thing if you keep doing it the same way over and over again. As a facilitator, you see the drain that the, the team is not excited to be there, and then you don't get excited to be there, and that's not a good thing because you're, you're through there to help help them uh, improve and get better. So, you know, doing the same thing over and over, of course, as you as a facilitator, is boring as well. So, if you have a lot of variety, sometimes uh, it can be hard to coming up with new ideas. So, like if you've gone through and you've used a bunch of cool ideas that you've read about and you're like, well, I'm fresh out of ideas now, and so now what do I do? And that's frustrating as well as a facilitator and for the teams involved. Also, there's a challenge a lot with teams with distributed retros. So you have a, a pain that half your team is here in you know, Boulder and half your team is in Raleigh, North Carolina, such as we have here. Um, how can you do it in a distributed fashion because you're all in the same place, you can't use stickies, that kind of throws out a lot of the fun ideas to begin with, it makes it hard, so you're kind of stuck doing the same thing over and over again. So we'll go through some ways to kind of help, help with your distributed retros as well. And those are some of the common pain points you run into when you're doing uh, retros. So here's a, a bunch of examples we've tried to kind of make things better, uh, get away out of that basic cadence of the what went well, uh, what's not going well kind of retrospective. It's kind of four categories we kind of group these into. There's kind of simple ones, which is you want to take your team and not do that standard retro, but you're afraid to go real far down the path from that standard retro. Some of these simple ones are just a nice step in the right direction that's, that's a little bit new and exciting, but it's not too much different than the standard format. 
Some examples that fall into this category of uh, what's called the four L's, speedboat, maybe themed retros. We'll go through some of these in a little bit. A second category is a focused retro. So say there's this problem that's kind of been bubbling under the surface at all retrospectives. You know, you talk about the, the top item and the second item, but there's always this third item. It always shows up as the third item, and you never talk about that third item. So maybe have, just have a focused retrospective just on that one thing that's always been coming up in your retrospective is a way to do that. Or there's an elephant in the room and you need to address it. Maybe you have a retro around that as well. Or maybe you want to work on team working agreements. That's another way thing you can be focused the meeting on strictly we're working on working agreements this retro. We're not doing the standard uh, retro. Another category is just to frankly switch it up. Maybe the team is sick of seeing you as the facilitator. Grab your buddy, like I'll grab Cassie and she said, hey, I need you to go run my retro for my team. They're tired of seeing me. They need a fresh face. Just change it up a little bit. Maybe even have somebody from the team try to do the retro for, for, for the team versus just you doing it as the scrum master or, or the leader of that team. Find different ways to switch it up. It's always exciting. And lastly, we have our favorite category for Cassie and I, and that's the extreme ones. Extreme! <laughs> These are ones you can't just jump in and start doing. You've got to have the right team. You've got to have the right mindset to kind of do these things. We do stuff with Legos in this category. Uh, we try board games and all kinds of fun stuff, and we'll show some examples of these as well as we go along here. So with that, let's jump in and talk about some of the simple things that I kind of alluded to earlier. First of these, it would be the speedboat sailboat. So you can say from my crew drawing from one of my retrospectives um, up here, and basically you draw a picture of a sailboat or a speedboat, whichever you can draw better and not get made fun of for drawing. Um, and then you draw the water and maybe draw an anchor off of that. And then you should kind of show, like I got some lines up here in this picture where you kind of see the wind that kind of blowing the sails of this particular sailboat. And how this one works is very similar to your what went well, what didn't go well kind of thing. But you kind of replace the, the wording with something different. Hey, we got a sailboat. It's pointed in some direction towards our objectives as a team. What are the things that wind that blows our sails and kind of sails us towards our objective in a positive fashion? It kind of replaces the what went well question, basically. And you put that stuff above the water. Then below the water, what are the things that are holding us back? What is anchoring us and not allowing us to move forward towards our objectives? And then they can throw things down there as anchors. You can mix this up, maybe throw some other thing, like you've got a, another element you want to add to this, like uh, appreciation, maybe you put appreciation on the boat itself. I've seen teams do all kinds of crazy stuff with the boat. You'll see stickies get up there making fun of your drawing usually at some point. But in general, this is just at least a minor step. It's pushing the team a little bit forward out of their comfort zone of those standard questions that you would always be doing. It's pretty much the same thing, just said a different way. And that's why it's called a simple one. Now, another thing that's kind of simple that I'm going to talk about now that you can do is usually a lot of retrospectives, you have the teams write things on stickies, and then you as a scrum master go around or, or leader go around and collect all those stickies and put them up on the board for the team, or you have them come up and put them up on the board. And then once everything's up there, you kind of, as scrum master, you read through each one of the stickies. Another simple thing you can do to engage team members is instead of you as the scrum master reading those cards, is have them bring them up one at a time to stick on the board, they read it out, and then stick it on the board. So you're kind of reading things out, as they are reading the things out, and you're not. So that gets more engagement from their point of view. And that's something you can do with any of these retrospectives we go through. You don't necessarily have to do it with just the sailboat. I just kind of want to point that out because it's another simple way to build engagement. So another uh, method that we got is a call the four L's. Why is it called the four L's? Because there's four categories, liked, learned, lacked, and longed for. They all start with L, get it? Um, in this particular example, I'm showing this through a CA tool called Instant Agenda. Instant Agenda is a great tool for doing distributed retros, which is one of the challenges we said earlier on. Basically, in this case, you have everybody get an Instant Agenda account, everybody logs in on their computer, and then you kind of run the retrospective through the tool. 
it runs through the steps of gathering the data that, and uh, discussing the insights and then voting on what you want to take action on and then deciding what to do. You can get action items and all this and you can come back to it. This is a great tool. I have a distributed team myself between Boulder and Raleigh. I use this very frequently. And the tool has templates in there, so you can do the, maybe like a speedboat, sailboat kind of example. You can do the, the 4L that's shown in this example. And what's good about it is, is that it just, it's really nice. It changes things up a little bit. You're not using stickies. Yeah, we all, a lot of people like stickies, but we're talking about developers here in general, and sometimes they don't like to be tangible with stickies. They like to stay behind their computer screen, and this allows that to happen. Um, but for the 4L example specifically, like liked is, you know, what does the team really enjoy about the sprint or iteration? Uh, you know, what went better than ex expected? The liked is in emphasizing the positive things. Learned is what, what did the team learn during the sprint? Because we learn a lot as we develop a software or whatever we're doing uh, that we need to do a retrospective around. Uh, we learn a lot. Let's call it out. Let's say we learned this and share it with the rest of the team. Uh, lacked. So lacked, and then you get a little bit here, teams sometimes get confused between the lacked and the, lo the longed for. They're very similar. But the lacked is what, what team things could the team have done better during the sprint? What did we lack? What did we not do so well? It's kind of a replacement for the what didn't go so well question. Now the longed for thing is what did the team really desire to have during the sprint that wasn't available? So like in the example here, I have a team that they were wanting a, a refactored Terraform, which is, I'm not even going to get into that. but. Uh, the team really wanted that badly, but they just didn't have the ability to do it. Um, these could be things that fall into a lot of categories. Um, yeah, so I'm going to turn it over to Kathy to talk about some holiday-themed retros. Oh, yeah. So this is kind of a fun way to incorporate any upcoming holidays into your retros. Uh, I'm just going to use Thanksgiving and Christmas as an example, but, you know, you can choose whatever theme is most appropriate for your org. Um, so for the Thanksgiving retro, this starts out with a little time to be creative. So I usually take about the first 10 minutes and I bring uh, my team back to kindergarten and I hand out paper and markers and I ask them to trace their hand and you make a turkey out of your hand just like you might have way back when. So I it's love kind of a back to kindergarten. I know, right? <laughs> Everyone likes coloring and it's. You would think that maybe some of your developers don't, but actually I've been pleasantly surprised every time I've tried this. They kind of get into it. So, um, you know, you trace your hand, you color your turkey, just have them get creative for the first 10 ish minutes or so. And then I usually have a list of questions or statements prepared for each of the, you know, the feathers, the fingers that they drew up there. And so I'll kind of go through them and have them just write on the very top, um, you know, their answers. So some of the categories I've used in the past. Um, name someone on the team or something about the team that you're thankful for, tying in that Thanksgiving uh, theme. Name something in our current process that you like and we should keep doing. Um, something I'm concerned about is, or I wish our team would. Um, and as you're going through and you, especially with the, like, I'm concerned about this or I wish we would do this, I usually, as a facilitator, just jot some of those down as notes so that we can talk about those, those categories a little more in detail. and you know, vote on some of the actions we actually want to take to improve those things. So that's just one way to have a little bit of fun. Uh, for Christmas, um, you can do this a couple different ways. So if you want to just draw one big Christmas tree up on your whiteboard and have people kind of come up and put their stickies on it, or if you want to, again, let people have some time to color, hand out paper and pens, they can kind of color their own and, and write things on their own paper. But um, typically for this, it'll do something like the star on the top of your tree is your proudest moment from that time box. Um, usually this obviously happens towards the end of the year, so sometimes we'll make it not a sprint retro, but maybe a quarterly retro. So, you know, what's your favorite proudest moment from that quarter? What are any lessons learned or questions you have? What are the Grinches? So things that stymied you or continually got in your way. And then down the bottom we have little gifts. So, you know, what, what's one word to describe that time box? Or what's something that you think we should celebrate? Uh, you know, something that was challenging and we didn't give up on and we're tenacious about. Um, you can make both of these remote friendly, um, especially if you have a little help in another office. Just want to make sure someone has uh, paper and markers or pens available. Um, for the Christmas tree, you could also just pre-draw it on like a Google drawing and let folks add 
virtual stickies to it. So I've done this, that both ways, and it's pretty pretty easy to do. All right, our next theme. Some people consider this a holiday, but I learned pretty quickly that May the 4th is actually Star Wars Day. <laughs> so I had a little fun with that one. Um, so, you know, when we're setting the stage, I actually found some template out on the internet that had the scrolling text. So we went through our like iteration goals and some of the metrics from the sprint, like in a kind of fun scrolling fashion. Um, and then what I don't have pictured here is I've I printed out some kind of images from the movies, um, and we I assigned categories to each image. So, for example, if there was one of, um, I think it's, I'm going to get in trouble for this. I think it was Vader <laughs> who said, uh, you know, the force is strong with this one, and that might be your appreciations category. So, like, who are the who are the people that you want to call out as like you know being especially helpful to you that sprint. Um, or if you have someone or a picture of Luke saying he'd never join the dark side, maybe that's something you're proud of. So you just kind of have to find uh, little images or quotes that you think kind of fit whatever category you're interested in in using for that retro. You can do this with maybe like any kind of movie oh, that yeah. the team, maybe there's a, a movie the team's passionate about or something, and if there is, there's lots of quotes in that Absolutely. movie, and you can construct something very similar to this just doing that, right? Yeah. Even like with inside jokes about movies, you can kind of have fun with it depending on what your team's into. Um, and this one was easy to make remote friendly as well. I mean, you can put everything in a, you know, PowerPoint slide or Google Slides and just share your screen with the scrolling text or the various categories and have people talk through them or put it again, put it in like a Google yeah. drawing or use instant agenda for your categories. And that's so, a real easy way. Of, like if you're looking for real simple solutions that don't cost money to make things remote friendly use Google or PowerPoint or something or web, whatever your tool is for sharing and then have everybody have access to that tool and you can log in and do it and create templates that way, sharing within the organization. You also get bonus points for this retro if you if you play the Star Wars theme as people are walking into the room. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so that's kind of where we are with kind of some simple ideas to move you forward a little bit. Um, you know, as we go through the kind of we're talking to go from the simple to the focused to the um, facilitator swap to the, the extreme, each each step's a little more difficult to do, uh, and you got to have the right teams for it kind of thing. Focused is a little bit beyond uh, simple, as I said. It's, it's very much, uh, there's always a thing that your team avoids, so... I have, my daughter has a stuffed elephant, so I bring the stuffed elephant in and I stick it in the room on the table, kind of like in this picture here, and the team comes in, and I start it as, what's the elephant in the room, and then see what you get. You might not even get the thing you were expecting to get, but you might get, you're going to get something, because the team will, and sometimes I'll walk in and I'll just sit down. I won't even say anything, I'll just wait for the team to acknowledge the elephant in the room, quite literally the stuffed elephant in the room. Um, this is, I think I've got this from Ikea, it's like a $10 thing you can buy, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, but then again, you can always uh, make it as a focused thing, you know the team has been having trouble around item X, you know, bring that in and specifically focus the retro around that thing. You can use the standard kind of template for that, you know, like, okay, let's collect ideas about this topic. Um, you're not talking about the sprint per se, maybe it's working agreements, maybe it's the build system doesn't work real well and we want to do something specific to the build system. Uh, or whatever topic is, is appropriate. Um, you know, so that's kind of a way to do a focused retro. Not much to this, but it's a little bit beyond the normal. So again, you're, you're changing things up a little bit. It's not just the standard thing. The key to making things interesting and engaging for your team is, is changing it up from time to time. So that's kind of where we are with the focused retro. So again, we talked a little bit this, about this earlier, is the uh, switching of facilitators. Uh, you know, grab your friendly neighborhood scrum master or peer, have them come do one for you. If you're by yourself, I've been in companies where I'm the only scrum master, have the team try it once. Like, you know what, you guys get to do this retro. You know, work with somebody who's will a willing participant. Don't force people to do things. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, find somebody who might want to move into the scrum master role or something, and maybe they want to practice at it. Uh, you know, you know, just don't bring their boss in. That's usually not a good thing. You know, usually having the boss facilitated is going to get things down a little bit. 
But in general, just find somebody different, change up the face who's doing the thing. They might bring a whole new fresh idea to the, uh, to the concept. And even if you're doing the standard questions, they might just say things slightly different or have a different attitude about it, be slightly more positive than you are because you kind of got bored with it. Just something a little different. Just make sure you return the favor when they come ask you to do their team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> All right, we're going to move into the ones that we really like now, and this is the extreme ones. These are the ones that, these aren't for the faint of heart teams, you know, a team that's been, you know, you've got to have the right team to do these things, uh, and if you don't get the right team, it, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, these are definitely some of my favorites. We have the most fun with these. But like you said, you've got to have a, a willing group of people <laughs> to do some of these. So um, this first one is really one of my favorites. Um, I learned about something similar at a, meetup I went to with Agile Learning Labs and I've kind of um, tweaked it a little bit, but um, there's some really fun games out on the market um, like Dixit or What Do You Meme or some examples that I like to use. Anything that has sort of images on the cards that people can infer meaning from. Um, so for example, on the bottom left of the screen you see a rabbit dressed as a knight walking towards a few doors. So one person might see that and it might remind them of the spike card that they got to work on and they were super excited about exploring all sorts of different opportunities and it was really exciting for them. Uh, another person might look at that and, you know, infer meaning around, you know, I felt really lost this sprint, I really wish I had a little more direction on where I was supposed to go. You know, there's really no wrong answer. Um, you're just going to really find out you know, what people felt about the sprint without asking any specific questions. It's going to kind of come from the inside. So um, you kind of use any any illustrated card game that you're aware of, or even if there's reusable images online, you can kind of make your own. Um, so one I've done in this area is I've used the uh, Rory Story Cubes, which have little pictures on them, and you kind of roll the dice. You know, like you have four or five of them, you roll them, and you got to construct a story out of that. So the, you roll your dice, construct a story about the sprint from those dice rolls, for example, is oh, another good one. I love that. Some of these, though, like uh, I would pro tip, just advise you to look through all the images before you bring them to your team. I, I definitely got in trouble the other day for not looking through the what do you mean <laughs> cards all the way. There's some you don't want at work. Anyways. HR violations. HR violations, yeah. So the last thing you want in a retro is an HR violation. Yeah, that's usually not good. Um, so the basic rules of, of this kind of game is each person is going to choose maybe five or so cards, depending on how many people you have in the room. Um, without showing anyone else, they're going to pick a card that reflects something they're feeling about the sprint. And then once everyone, once everyone has their card ready, you're going to go around the room one at a time, and one person's going to show the rest of the group their card, and everyone else has to guess why they picked that card. And once everyone has, has had a chance to guess or pass, they'll reveal you know, the true reason around um, why they picked that card. So if you want to add a competition element to this, you can say, you know, the person who is closest gets a point, and you know, whoever has the most points at the end gets a fabulous prize, whatever you have lying around. Um, so why, why is it important to have them guess what they're thinking first? So it brings out other people's inferred meaning. So they, they might see that card and be like, I can relate to this because this is how I felt about the sprint. So that's probably what they meant by this. And sometimes they're right, and sometimes it's a completely different issue that maybe the rest of the team didn't understand that this person was feeling. So it's really nice that you get um, a wider range of topics to discuss. Um, and then you kind of have to use your best judgment depending on what people bring up and the conversations being had. Maybe you want to ask some more questions about a certain topic or sort of let the conversation flow a little freely before you step in for the have the next person go. So, um, and if there's anything that comes up in these discussions that could be potential action items, I usually will jot those down as well and we can look at those towards the end of the, end of the retrospective to see if there's any of those that we want to try to do as an experiment for the next sprint. So it's, it's really fun. It's, it's definitely, um, you get a lot of topics brought up that you just really don't expect, and it's great because as a facilitator, you sometimes try to steer the conversation, and this is sort of a much more freeing way of doing it. I really like it. Um, one way I've made this remote friendly is I actually have pictures of any of the cards I'm going to use, and I just throw those into a slide deck and just share the slide deck. So it's a little harder to limit you know, only choose from five cards, but that really hasn't gotten in my way, and that gives a 
an easy way for people in multiple locations to access what everyone's seeing. Cool. So this next one, uh, I had a team member who challenged me to come up with a retro that we could do outside in nice weather. So as I was trying to think about what that could be, I was like, you know what, board game, we can we can make this happen. So. You know, it turns out you can buy blank board games, blank cards, you know, dice, random game pieces, all online. So Amazon's I Amazon's great. Isn't Amazon's it? great. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, you know, bought all that stuff and kind of let my artistic side fly one day in the office. Um, people kept asking me why I was coloring, and I was like, I swear it's for work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a board game. I'm making a board game. <laughs> I swear it's for work. So the basic rules of this game is you roll the dice, you move your game piece, and then you pick up and read or read and respond to one of the cards. And you know, you're know, you creating all the cards. So you have a lot of freedom in what you might want in here. So usually I'll make, I don't know, four or five of each each one. and. Some of the cards I've I've created were, you know, what worked well this sprint? What's a stressful part of your job that you wish you could improve? Give an appreciation. What's a challenge you expect the team to have in the future? What do you love about your job? What would make you enjoy your job more? So I mean, really, whatever you think you might want to get out of the team. All kinds of great, powerful, open-ended questions. Exactly. The what, the why, the who <laughs> kind exactly. of things. Then again, with this one, you kind of have to use your best judgment again on what you think we should spend more time on or if you want to poke and ask more questions about. And again, jot down some any potential action items that come up that you can discuss with the team at the very end. Um, if someone makes it to the finish, you can also offer a fabulous, fabulous prize. prize. I say fabulous prize, and I really mean like the temporary tattoo of a butterfly <laughs> that's sitting in my desk. <laughs> it's really not that fabulous. But my, team, my team's on to me now. They know every time I promise a fabulous prize, it's not that fabulous. <laughs> um, in terms of making this remote friendly, it is really not. Um, if you're savvy enough to be able to make a virtual board game or know of one out there that exists, I would love to know about it. Um, but so far, this has really been kind of an in-person record. Or if your organization does like a hack week or something, we'll have, have the developers maybe hack together a, a virtual board game for you or something like that. I should propose that for yeah. upcoming hack week. Well, I think you made another good point that I, that I didn't even think about when we were planning this whole thing in the first place. You talked about going outside. I didn't even think about that until you just said it. That's another thing you can do. It's really simple. It's like instead of just switching the facilitator, switch the, the venue. Maybe you've always used the same conference room. Go somewhere different. Go go. I've actually done a retrospective at a restaurant with the team before. We sat around the table, ordered food, got a beer, and did our retrospective right there. It was amazing how just being out of the office got people to talk a little bit more. Lightens the mood. It lightened the mood. It changed. It's, it, you know, sometimes you go outside and say it's been, you know, not everyone in the, who might be on this webinar is from delightful Colorado where we have sun 300 days a year. It might be that you're stuck in, you know, Ohio like I used to be and, and it's always cloudy except for those days it's sunny. You really want to get out on a sunny day. So take advantage of it and figure out how to do something outside like Cassie's team challenged her. Uh, that's, a, that's another real simple way to get better engagement in a retro. All right, my personal favorite of all the retros is the Lego retro, because I love Legos. This gives me an excuse to bring in Legos. It gives me an excuse to play with Legos, even though I really don't get to play with them as the facilitator. I love the Lego retro. I'm not going to say I invented this by any stretch of the imagination, though. I found this online, and I kind of tweaked it for my own thing. So why would you even want to do this? I mean, this seems like kind of crazy, like Legos, we're going to build stuff. How do you do a retro building stuff? Well, it's something really different. That's why you want to do it. You really want to get people out of the box. This is a way to get them out of the box. However, you got to be careful. you got to have a team that's creative, that wants to do the Legos. If you say Legos and half the team goes, Ugh, then this is not for them. Don't do it. Because <laughs> then you'll just not have as much fun with it. Um, there's lots of ways to run this one. Uh, the way that I have done is um, basically I start off with kind of, hey, build me a representation of the most memorable thing for you from the last sprinter iteration. And then turn them loose for 10 to 15 minutes and let them build Legos. And they'll put, and you'd be surprised. I've done this and I'm like, this, this is gonna blow up my face. I just know it. And people go to town and they build stuff. 
And I don't give you a whole lot of rules about how big it needs to be or what it can be or whether you can work with other people. I just say build something to represent the thing. And I'm amazed, amazed how team members come, hey, you're building something that, oh, are you building something about that? Oh, yeah, all right, let's work. And they get together and build something. It was amazing. You go around, and, and one time I had two people build something um, that, that they were concerned about the amount of spending that was happening, the team was spending, or the organization was spending as a whole, or lack of spending. I can't, uh, it was, it was, they were concerned about how much we were burning through. One person was building a fire to kind of represent they were burning through cash. Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, somebody was building a big green money symbol out of Legos, and then they saw each other, hey, you're, you're concerned about spending? Yeah, and they put their two things together. They had a fire and a money symbol burning fire. So they're burning through cash, basically, is what, what it was. So, but, but again, very similar to what Cassie said earlier in like the Dixit example, you ask the team first, what do you think this thing of theirs that they built represents? It starts that conversation. You never know. You might get something completely different than that person intended, but you have a conversation around that. You learn something, and then they say what it was, and then you have a conversation around that. Take, take notes about action items and stuff as you go along. I've also, sometimes I kind of leave it at that and then move into a standard kind of activity to say, hey, what do you want to, what do you want to, you know, what do we want to do about the things we learned? I've also had them take, a, take this a step further. We're already having fun with Legos. Build me something that you think is an action or something we should do to improve this situation. And the team amazingly did it. They'll put little guys and set them around the table like, oh, we are not collaborating well. Oh, they build a little coffee, it's a coffee shop basically. I have people sitting around the table meeting, hey, we should all get together and talk a little more. Um, yeah, and my, yeah, so there's all kinds of good stuff you can do with this one. You can run it a lot of different ways. Um, it's not super remote friendly. As long as you've got somebody that's willing to spend money, you can buy more Legos for the other site, or the remote people can buy Legos, or if they have kids and have Legos at their house and they're a work from home person, they can you do it that way. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the Legos everywhere, and making sure if you don't, if you're doing remote stuff but don't have video cameras, then it doesn't work at all. Um, that's definitely a challenge. If you don't, if you're doing remote and it's all audio, a lot of the things we showed off here are a little more difficult unless you have like screen sharing software. Uh, Legos and card games and board games are not going to work unless you got video cameras with those remote works. And when your boss wants to know why you're expensing Legos, you can send them the link to this, <laughs> this webcast. Yeah, the, the, this webcast. And <laughs> great, Todd told me I can buy Legos. Great, now I'm going to get angry letters from people <laughs> around the country going, you told my employees they could buy Legos. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, uh, that's one of my favorites. It's, it's hard to do, but it's worth it if, it if it goes off right. I like that one. I have to try that one. <laughs> So um, I think that's all the retros we we're going to cover. Really hope you learned something that you can take back and make your retros more engaging and exciting for both you and your teams. Um, and I think we're going to close it out and then take any questions that you might have for us. Yeah, so thanks, Cassie and Todd. Um, those are some really cool, innovative ideas I've never thought about before. Um, and while we're waiting for a few more moments while folks potentially ask their last minute questions, I would just like to share some great resources we have so you can keep in touch with us for updates and more. Um, we're offering a few Agile Academy courses online at any time and also in person during September and October. You can visit agileacademy.ca.com uh, for details and registration. And for those of you who haven't already, please join our Agile Central community. The URL is listed and I always find it helpful to bookmark it. Um, we have a monthly customer newsletter sharing product updates, upcoming events, learning and education opportunities, and so, so much more. Um, I think it's really beneficial to subscribe, and you can su subscribe to this monthly newsletter by finding the CA Agile Central newsletter section and clicking the subscribe button below it. And since you are here with me now, you know about the monthly community webcast series. To RSVP to upcoming webcasts, find the webcast button at the top of the community page and go ahead and click RSVP. Um, it looks like that we haven't found any questions yet. Um, they killed the presentation. They did such a good job. I want to thank you all again <laughs> uh, one more time. Um, thanks for teaching us about, oh, looks like we do have a question. <laughs> all right, so the question we got was, regardless of the type of retro, you know, normal, extreme, Legos, are there questions you always ask about a sprint? 
I mean, it, all of these are uh, kind of a mutation of one form or another about what went well and what doesn't go well. So in some way, shape, or form, you really need to go, like, you know, what is what has gone, if you're doing kind of a standard, not a focused retro, but more of a standard, like how the last iteration or quarter or whatever you're retroing over, like generally kind of some way to say what went well, but maybe not say what went well, you know. Uh, that's a key one, and then the things that maybe can be improved upon that we need to, to do, or th those are two key ones. For me personally, I always like to have appreciations built into my retrospective. I was going to say that too. Yeah, and it's not a required thing, it's not even in any format you'll see anywhere as a formal thing, but I always try to find a way to work appreciations in, even if it's just a simple like introduct, like a, a uh, check in, start the retro kind of thing. Hey, appreciate one person on the team from the what you know last sprint or something, or at the end, you know, hey, let's appreciate each other because it's really important to build that rapport between the teams and really appreciate what we're doing for each other. All right, we have another question. Do we have a template in Rally to capture retrospective discussion points? I don't know that there is an official area for this. I've seen teams do this in different ways, so. Uh, for example, if you have some action items that come out of that, those might end up as cards on your board. Um, I've also seen teams capture this in the, I want to say it's like the time, like the iteration time box notes field. Okay. Um, yeah, there's no built-in kind of retrospective portion of the tool, but, uh, you know, you can definitely take the actions. The actions should generally end up on the board somewhere anyhow, whether it's your team's uh, sprint board for the next sprint or in a backlog if they're, they're not things you're going to work on right away. Um, yeah, I can't think of any specific templates that are built into the tool. Oh, there's a release retrospect. I, I'm, one of our colleagues is in the room showing us something that exists. <laughs> is, that, is that an app? <laughs> oh, there's an app. Okay. She so knows just, more than we so, do. So, yeah, that's why we brought her along to listen to us, to tell us what we were going to forget. So there, there apparently is an app, a team retrospective app. So if you look through our app catalog, there should be one of those. You can capture it that way as well. Um, yeah, so. Always opportunities for There's always opportunities, time. yeah. Right. Uh, again, you know, you have, you know, maybe design your own app, so. All right. Oh, here's one for you, Steven. As CA employees, can we take the classes? Absolutely. Go for it. I've taken some classes here. They're great. Yeah, CA, CA classes are always good to brush up on anything, so I would definitely encourage. Yeah, I've done the SAFE class. I think what, what, what have you done? I've done the CSTO class. So, it's good stuff. <laughs> At one point, there was Rally Power Users, now that it's called something else. End to end. That's a good one. <laughs> they didn't clearly didn't cover the release retrospective. Um, all right, this this is great. Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, any tips for remote teams? I work with team with team members in India. So the, the tips for remote teams is to make sure they don't feel like they're isolated. So make sure you're specifically calling them for like stuff when you're. If you're in the room with like four members of the team, don't focus on getting stuff from just the people in the room. Specifically ask, hey, folks remote in whatever location you're dealing with, what have you got for me? Or actually start with them is what you should do, yeah. and then come back to the room. Kind of make them feel very included. Make, make sure you go to extra effort to make sure you're bringing them in. Um, if you have the capability of being able to share desktops or, you know, uh, electronically or have an electronic form or look into Instant Agenda, it might be a great tool for your remote teams. I would also say do video as much as possible. You can see them face to face. That's a huge one. If you have the capability of doing video, do that. I know a lot of people get important. uncomfortable with that if you're not used to it, but it makes such a big difference. Uh, what's the cost for Instant Agenda? I'm not totally sure, but if you go to instantagenda.com, you can take a look at that. I believe they do a 42-day free trial because 42 is the answer to everything. <laughs> it's a great tool. We all we all use it here and really love it. Um, any tips to have folks that are reserved open up in retros? And this is a generally the thing where uh, you kind of go by that standard format where you kind of check in or start your retro. You try to get everybody involved at the very start somehow, especially if you got folks that are kind of reserved. Don't make the, the question like, you know, real like personal or anything, but maybe just a simple kind of like, 
hey, we're going to get started today. Uh, you know, what do you think, if you had to pick a superhero that represented the last iteration, what would it be? And that gets those reserved people to say something to start the, the retrospective. And I think there's been studies, psycho psycho psychological studies that have shown that if you engage early on, you're more willing to engage later on. Um, I'm sure there's some stuff out there on the internet, just Google for that. But yeah. that's one of the ways I try to get the reserve people more involved. Or um, another method I've used in the past to get the reserve people is to not actually have everybody saying stuff out loud, but have everybody write things down on stickies. And then, like I said, maybe have them, as you write, they take it up to the board to put the sticky on. Then they have, they have to say it as they put it on the board. You know, initially when they're writing things down, they kind of get picked to their, the reserve person can be in their own little world while they do that. Um, maybe initially just have them write things down and put them up on the board. That's a good way to get things uh, going for those reserve people. And then as time goes, maybe they'll be more comfortable saying things as they put it up. Yeah, any would, other thoughts? Just one thing I would add to what you already said was about getting people to talk early. Even if they, you can, you know, if you ask about their favorite superhero or if they, a sports superhero representing the sprint, if you give them the option to answer or say pass, the fact that they say pass out loud actually has shown that they'll participate more later in the retro. Again, kind of leading back to these yeah. studies that we can't quite quote, but. Yeah. Yeah, definitely don't force anybody to do anything when you're doing questions like that. We, you know, allow the ability to pass, but make them say the word pass. Just don't make them, you know, wave a hand at you or something. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we have in here. There's a lot of questions about, can you tell us the address again? I don't know if that was about uh, the class addresses or Instant Agenda. If it was Instant Agenda, it's instantagenda.com. If it was something about what Steve yeah, said. Yeah, I, I posted the, if it was about the courses, I posted the link to that in the comments, in the chat. Um, and then, like Cassie said, I think that that's the other link. Oh. All right, should we include all stakeholders in retrospective discussion or is this for the team only? Also, should we publish the retrospective outcomes the whole team, including business and end users. So the retrospective is absolutely just for your Scrum team. Um, so that would include the developers, Scrum Master, your product owner. I would not invite any other stakeholders. The only time I would do that is if the team has a focused retro conversation in mind that requires another Somebody person to be, to be there, but it's more of the team invites them. Otherwise, this really is kind of a closed meeting. It's meant to be a safe place for your team to discuss. And again, issues. you got to be really clear with the team as to what the definition of the team is. I've been in organizations where the team didn't consider the product owner part of the team, which I think is a horrible idea, first of all. Yeah. But that team didn't want their product owner in the room, and they would shut down if the product owner was in the room. So that's a, that's a smell and a problem in itself that needs to be addressed. And as a Scrum Master, you should be working that problem with the team. but. Make sure you try to honor it initially. Like they don't want to, that, that they don't feel that person's part of the team. Make sure they are not in that room initially until you can work out that problem and get that that uh, problem solved. And there was a second part of that question about should we publish the outcomes to the whole team, including business and end users? I think this sort of you have to leave up to your team. I think if there's action items that you want to track on your board, obviously like transparency is important about what we're spending your time on. So that's a good thing to let people know about. Would I publish all my notes from retrospectives? Probably not. That's really just for the team. If the team maybe discusses something that they think is important to share with other teams, like lessons learned, then absolutely give them the freedom to do that. But it shouldn't be just yeah, it's very go to. It's very team centric on this one again. Uh, make sure you understand what your team thinks. I've had teams that are very open and are like, yeah, sure, share. We, we're willing to share everything that we just talked about out in the world. And we got those that use the Vegas rules of what happens in retro stays in retro. Don't talk about it outside this room. You got those extremes. You got to understand your team and make sure you do what's right for the team. At the end of the day, as a scrum master or facilitator of that retrospective, you're serving the team. So what's going to be best for them is what you should do. Yeah. And this is a similar question. Is it a good idea to bring in managers to retros occasionally if the team is comfortable with this idea? Again, I'd say if it was a team's idea and they want to invite their manager, then absolutely go for it. But um, as a scrum master, I would not just invite someone's manager without making sure that was a wanted thing. So. And I've been on teams where the manager actually does development work as well, so they're kind of part of the team. So, But in general, those teams have wanted that person involved, so I haven't had to deal with the problem of, yeah, you did develop it, but the team doesn't want you in the room. <laughs> All right, let's see. What 
tips do you have for running distributed retros? So we kind of tried to scatter those throughout um, with the retros that we covered. I think this person said they may have come in late. Um, so definitely advise you to rewatch this. No, no. Get the most out of it. But yeah, in general, you yeah. guys talked about this too, Todd. Just you know, ask, trying to engage remote first. Um, video sure, if possible. Yeah, video if possible. And they're comfortable with it. Say they're work from home. They might not be comfortable turning on their camera at home. I don't know. You got, you got to do what they're comfortable with at the end of the day. All right. And it looks like I confused someone with the 42 day free trial. That's specifically for Instant Agenda, not for the courses that are offered. So sorry for the confusion. Yeah, those, those courses that are offered just for that particular um, question, those are in-person in courses where you'll be with a class and you'll be doing, you know, a few days of, of learning pretty, um, you know, tangible, tangibly. So I think that the 42-day trial is something different. Yeah, just for instance, agenda, the, the remote-friendly retrospective tool that we mentioned a few times. But it looks like... Um, those are all the questions that we have for now. Feel free to continue asking questions. Um, Todd and Cassie will receive those. Um, and thank you once again, guys, for um, hosting this, teaching us all about how to make retrospectives more fun and engaging. I really appreciate it. And also thank you to everyone who joined the community webcast today. Um, be sure to look out for the next webcast. Thanks again, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.